And what is going on everybody, welcome back to the channel. And today, Clock Tuner for Ryzen 2.0 just came out and I wanted to give you guys a little tutorial on how to use this new version of CT CTR by our boy Oneusmus. Uh, some of the changes, the performance improvements, and just a fresh tutorial. I actually have a tutorial on Clock Tuner Horizon 1.0 that I made a few months ago, and it's actually my most viewed video on YouTube, currently sitting at 24,000 views. So I'm pretty stoked for that. But anyways, we're not going to waste any time. We're going to hop right into it. Um, in the description below, I'm going to have download links to Clock Tuner Horizon 2.0 and Cinebench R20, because whenever you download CTR, it does not come with Cinebench um, R20 in your folder. You have to download it and manually extract it in the CB20 folder. If not, this application isn't going to work. So for those who do not know what Clock Tuner for Ryzen is, it's an automatic undervolting and overclocking utility within Windows using the Ryzen Master um, libraries and base software from AMD. CTR just takes uh, another step forward by um, improving Ryzen Master's algorithms and giving a better user interface. Now, some prereqs before starting this is these aren't 100% requirements, but are extremely highly recommended. Um, I recommend updating your BIOS to the newest version. Agisa 1.2.0 just came out for um, my motherboard, which is a MSI B550 board. So I went ahead and updated that, downloaded the, the newest AMD chipset drivers, and I personally changed some settings around in my BIOS that are not required. Um, for example, I changed my load line calibration mode to level three, disabled C CPU sped spread spectrum, and I went ahead and applied a RAM overclock that I have. But with this newer version of CTR, none of that is required, which is, um, which is pretty cool. So explaining some, explaining how this program actually works. So CTR actually ranks each individual core with these numbers right here and determines which CCX is the better overclocker. Now, I have a Ryzen 7 3700X, I am on a custom loop, and my water block is absolute dog shit. It's an EK Supremacy Classic, I believe. Um, I got it when it was on sale, regret buying it. Um, it doesn't work well at all. I get high CPU temperatures on stock performance, and I have, a, have another two or three videos on my channel explaining how bad this water block is and things I've done to try and improve it, including lapping it, which did help some. But anyways, I'm getting off topic. So how this program works is it uses Prime95 to stress test your CPU to see which overclocks are stable. And if a core crashes, it stops Prime, the Prime95 stress test, underclocks or brings the clock speeds down on that um, CCX and raises it on the other CCX and plays back and forth until both C uh, until a core from both CCX crashes and it keeps running another stability test just to make sure everything is stable. Applies that overclock and you can change that here in the settings and every time you boot up Windows, your overclock is automatically applied and you don't have to mess with anything in the BIOS. And the reason why I prefer this overclock um, as opposed to BIOS overclocks is BIOS overclocks are set at a um, specific frequency on both CCXs. Meanwhile, CTR can um, has, will give you a better single core boost uh, instead of locking you down at that all, all core lower frequency. And if I'm not mistaken, one estimates is actually working on a version of CTR where each individual core can be adjusted, which would be amazing. Being able to adjust the frequency of each core, that would, uh, that'd be a real game changer. So I was playing around with this earlier, so I'm gonna go ahead and reset my settings. And I'm gonna change, yours is gonna be on default, I'm changing mine to advanced. So I already have a good idea of how my CPU performs and what it's capable of, especially with my cooling setup. So I'm going to be changing some settings that um, you guys can work off of as well. So 
First and foremost, I recommend that everyone changes their maximum temperature to 95 degrees Celsius, which is the highest that CTR will set it to. Ryzen CPUs are perfectly fine at running 100 degrees Celsius under extreme heavy loads like AVX and AVX 2.0 workloads. So I'm changing that to 95. Another thing that I recommend, depending on your cooling setup, is changing both your diagnostic voltage and, well, just the diagnostic voltage to now to 1.35. If you increase it any higher in CTR, they, um, they, it kind of freaks out. Um, I'm actually going to do 1.325. It kind of freaks out if you do 1.35 or higher. So I'm going to stick at 1.325 just to squeeze out a little bit more performance and get better results. So that's what I'm changing my diagnostic voltage to. And what the diagnostics does in this application is it, Runs through a few basic preliminary tests to figure out what a good starting frequency for the auto overclocking algorithm should be. Um, some more settings that I'm going to change just for the purposes of this YouTube video is changing the cycle time, which is how long the stress tests actually run for. And I also recommend that people change the CCX delta. This is the maximum delta that you can have between each CCX. So stock is 25, meaning the greatest core frequency you can have between CCX1 and 2 is 25 megahertz. I'm just going to bring it to a maximum of 250 because I don't, I don't mind the difference between the two, especially at these voltages. So there's more settings in here you can play around with, such as these, uh, the enhanced accuracy, CCR hybrid OC, but I'm not really going to mess with that unless I feel like I need to. So... We're just gonna go ahead, hop right into it. I change the maximum temperature, my diagnostic voltage. I'm gonna leave all the other settings the same, except for um, the cycle time and CCX delta, obviously. And I'm gonna click diagnostics. It's gonna give you, Windows is gonna ask you permission to run it or run Cinebench, where it'll actually get a baseline for how your processor performs. So this is, um, this is kind of stock right here, this, uh, this frequency. It's actually, this is like without any, um, without, what is it, precision boost overdrive? I think it gives you like a baseline without precision boost overdrive and without, without much um, overclocking at all. So usually if I have all my settings, my BIOS set the stock, it'll boost to about 40, 25, 40, 50 megahertz ish at um, stock voltages. So. Anyways, it'll run a base Cinebench R20 just to give you a score, just to see a baseline on how your CPU is performing to compare it to later. And as you can see, this is where we're boosting right now. And the test is going to end. And we can see it'll, it's going to be only brief. As soon as the test is done, it, it closes out the window. So I kind of got to look over here to see, uh, see what scores we get stock. Okay, stock it looks like we got a 4198. I have a lot of background programs running as you can tell so and i'm recording so that's um uh, that's what my baseline is looking like 4198 again it's all going to change depending on your guys's specific cpu bin which i'll i'll show you guys here just in a second after this diagnostics and um your cooling solution i'm personally going to get in a heat killer here as soon as my water block just because i heard great things about them so let's Alrighty, so as you can tell, um, I don't know what happened. I think this is a glitch with CTR, maybe. Um, but you can tell right here, yep, your CPU is bronze sample. And it wants to have my ref... Uh, these are different overclocking profiles. See, this is my recommended values for undervolting, which would be 1175 millivolts at 3725. Undervolting is only recommended if you're um, really wanting to get low temperatures and low power consumption. However, I recommend a um, pretty balls to the wall overclock. So I'm going to go with uh, recommended values for P2, profile 2, which is 1350 and with a um, starting fre frequency of 4000 megahertz. So I recommend that you guys actually follow uh, what CTR sa says, but just because I am familiar with um, my specific CPU, I'm actually going to start it. 4025 for the reference frequency and 1.35 volts for the reference voltage. Um, again, I have my cycle time down just to save on time for making this video. I recommend that everyone sets their CCX Delta uh, pretty high 
and follow the rest of these values that the diagnostics give you. And again, I'm gonna go with profile too. So once you do that, um, you're gonna go ahead and click tune. And what tuning should do is right here, it'll go ahead and um, begin with these preliminary values that we just put in. And it's gonna run a basic Prime 95 stress test in the background. Again, it's going fast because of my cycle time. And it's gonna slowly increase each CCX frequency by 25 um, megahertz, I believe it's 2550, somewhere around there, and slowly increase it until a core crashes, drops down the um, frequency on the corresponding CCX to uh, where the core reside, resides that crashed, rerun the uh, stress test, and keeps adjusting those values until, um, until both CCXs are stable at their highest frequency and it's going to take a while to do this it will take some time so go make you some food coffee your compute your computer itself shouldn't crash if you do the diagnostics and everything beforehand um, but there is a possibility and it does suck usually it's because of uh, too low voltage so again it takes some playing around with but the best part is um, you don't have to change any settings in your BIOS to apply this overclock. It starts with Windows. So, um, I guess I will catch you guys in a second um, as values start to move up and down and uh, catch you guys there. So, as we can tell, um, I had to adjust some settings because my PC actually crashed and Having OBS open and recording actually affects my overclocks a good bit because of how CPU intensive um, recording can be. So for my overclock, I got uh, CCX1 at 4,025 megahertz and CCX2 at 4,050 megahertz. And I'm sure this could be um, changed depending on you know what I had running in the background, uh, but. As soon as this is done, it opens up Cinebench and starts to do another run to see what your scores are afterwards. You can tell in the logs right here what cores failed and what CCX got downclocked uh, to account for the failure of dropping a thread. And this is where it found uh, the overclock was stable given my temperature, power limit, voltage, and overall silicone lottery scores. And what I had running in the background, which is a lot considering I've, uh, I was recording. So we, oh, it was too fast for me to look at, but now we can check. Let's see. Now we should be able to go to, uh, where is it at? There should be, I think it's benchmark. There we go. So this is our, um, original power output. See, I went for an overclock instead of an under volt. So um, as you can tell right here, I got 88 originally was our power limit. Now it's 108 and then I used more voltage again. This is because I was going for an overclock and you can go for an over under volt. So we can look at the difference before, before and after. I got 42, 44 to 4378. Uh, what should told me the uh, told me a percentage gain on that because I don't want to do the math on it. But these are our default values before and our values after. And again, I'm going to play around with this more um, after I'm done recording to get better scores. I think I can, can squeeze a 4150 on CCX2 and about a 4050 on CCX um, on CCX1. And again, you can play around with the voltage. I actually found this out, but um, the CTR will now let you. Um, put in higher voltage. It just warns you that you are going over the voltage limit. But that's it. And uh, again, this is all that's to it. Your your results may vary, and I'm actually curious to know what processor you guys have, what um what type of sample you got, bronze, silver, gold, or platinum, and your before and after scores. I'm very very curious, and uh, I read the comments all the time. So if you guys have any questions, please put them down below. Now to apply this for whenever um, you boot up Windows, you should be able to go to profile management. Uh, let's see. 
fill P1 profile, you can apply that profile. And I'm not going to get into it in this video, but you can actually do a P2 profile, which can be your undervolt. And then you can go to tuner and select CTR hybrid OC, and it'll actually dynamically switch between those two profiles, depending on what you're doing. I'm not going to do it in this video, but I will answer questions about it in the comment section. So anyways, that's our um, profile one. And then we can go back to tuner and auto load profile with OS. I can put it to, to, to tray so I don't have to see that. And that's it. You have you a nice little um, overclock. Not much work, just a lot of time for it to run through. Anyways, guys, I hope y'all enjoyed it. Please remember to subscribe, like, comment. Uh, it means a lot to me. I'm trying to hit a thousand subscribers by the end of 2021. A thousand subscribers would be a huge landmark for me because then I can start doing community posts, uh, get monetization and other things that'll really, really help out the channel. Anyways, like I said, questions, comments, concerns, put them in the comments below, and I will see y'all in the next one.